Today on the Philly Talk Podcast, I want to start with Howie Roseman because there are reports that he might not be done. Alvin Kamara to the Eagles or maybe Kareem Hunt. He's still looking for running back, maybe a safety. We talk about that. We talk about Robert Quinn's impact on the Bears, one of the most double team players in the league, and what that means for the Eagles. We also got to break down his press conference. And let's not forget, we got to play football Sunday. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Battle of PA. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, we got a lot to get into, but before we do that, Eagle Nation, if you just love the aggressive nature of one Howie Roseman, do me a favor, hit that like button for the Eagles, Howie, and your boy Philly Mike. Also, ding the bell and check the link in the description. We talk Eagle news behind the YouTube scenes. It's only for iPhone, but we got over 330 great people in there, and we were chopping it up yesterday about Robert Quinn and what Howie could still do. Let's get to this breaking report. ML Football said after making an attempt to trade for star running back Christian McCaffrey, the Eagles have had talks with five-time Pro Bowler Alvin Kamara per league source and still actively remain involved in his market. Now again, Kamara is a different animal. Do I honestly believe we can get Kamara? No. The money thing alone, I don't believe we can get Alvin Kamara, mind you, we talked about Robert Quinn's uh, cap hit. The the Bears are taking the bulk of that money for this year. I saw a report today that the Eagles are only going to pay him pretty much on their tab, the vet minimum. So one thing was fourth round picks. Now you got to pay this cap price, blah, 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 blah. This year, he's pretty much on the vet minimum. Could that mean Kamara's money? Can fit under the Eagles cap? I don't know. But ML Football quote tweeted that today and said nothing is eminent as of right now between the Eagles and the Saints. Getting the Browns running back Kareem Hunt is more likely due to Kamara's salary cap hit. Listen, I was under the impression we were going to get a pass rusher or a running back. I picked pass rusher. We already got it. And we're going to talk about how valuable Robert Quinn really is. But if you get me a running back as well, as long as you don't interrupt the futures of the Bradburys, the Garner Johnsons, the Kaiser Whites, the TJ Edwards, and maybe even Marcus Epps, don't interrupt them. Speaking of Marcus Epps and CJ Garner Johnson, safety was on the Eagles' mind too. I don't got this tweet to pull up, but ML Football said in the process of trading for Quinn, Fourth round to the Bears, Quinn to the Eagles. We try to throw something else in there so the Bears could throw in Eddie Jackson, the safety. Now, we couldn't get that done. But if Howie can finagle something, he still might. Rumors around the NFL per league source that something still is in the works via Eagles and a tread deadline acquisition or maybe even selling Andre Dillard. The Jets, the Chargers, all called, but the Eagles are staying firm on their price. Don't back down. Make them pay the piper. As simple as that. Now, when I look at Robert Quinn, a stat came out yesterday that I immediately tweeted when I heard about it. So wait, Robert Quinn has been double teamed 58 times In this early season, seven weeks of football, he's been doubled 58 times. That might be the reason why uh, Raekwon Smith was over there crying. I understand he's a young player, and, and, and Quinn was like his big brother, his OG leader. Sad about that, but also Quinn was getting doubled 58 times. To put it in perspective, guys like Nick Bosa, who's always on the defensive line, and Micah Parsons, who rushes a lot, have only been double teamed somewhere in the amount of 40s, 40-ish, 
41, 48, 47. Regardless if it's 49, Bosa, a premier pass rusher, Parsons, one of the best pass rushers, when he is uh, doing it, not double teamed more than one Robert Quinn. And now he's on a line with BG, Sweat, Hassan Reddick, and himself with Fletch, who ain't playing that great against the run, but he's wreaking havoc. He's wreaking havoc in the past, still got three sacks. Telling you, this is big time. The last time he wasn't doubled, he had that 18 and a half. 18 and a half sacks. He was number 48 on the top 100 coming into the season. Talk about that one sack all you want. Go ahead, NFC East, Cowboy fans, mainly, because you could talk about the one sack. It's going to change ASAP, Rocky. Just wait. Listen to what Robert Quinn said when asked about pass rushing with a lead. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about pass rushing with a lead? Listen. They've had double-digit leads in every game this season. As an experienced pass rusher, what's what's pass rushing like in the second half, fourth quarter of games when you have that type of lead? Guess I'm about to find out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I haven't had many of them, so I guess I'm about to find out. We'll see. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Thanks, Robert. I guess I'm about to find out. I haven't had a lot of them. We'll see. Now, the crazy thing is he laughed. And the question was, the Eagles have had a double-digit lead in every game they played. How does it feel to rush the passer with that double-digit lead? He pretty much wanted to say, when you could pin your ears and go at it. Robert Quinn knows he's a vet. He has over 100 sacks. But he's a humble and he understands and said multiple times, these guys are 6-0 without me. I'm coming here to just do my job. Do my job. He's not flexing his muscle or talking this, that, and the third. He's humble, and he's hungry, and he understands what it takes to win. The Eagles did it six times without him, but he is going to make this team better for sure. They did also ask him about how he feels, what was his reaction, his initial reaction. I put these two on YouTube Shorts. If you caught it on YouTube Shorts, shout out to you. If not, we go and hear it real quick. It's only, you know, 20, 30 seconds. This is his reaction to being traded to the Eagles. What was your reaction when the trade went down? Uh, Shock. I'm still kind of, I mean, for all honesty, I'm still kind of, I've been telling everyone I'm still trying to guess get a full grasp on what you know happening the transition but besides that you know happy you know new place and great you know as I told everyone I want to come in do my part and you know they've been rocking and rolling before I got here so I again don't want to mess anything up just you know try to add whatever I can to to help make this team better that's it they've been rocking and rolling without me I still want to contribute as you can see These are from my TikToks, and then these are from on YouTube Shorts. If you don't follow me on TikTok and you got TikTok, all you got to do is type at Philly Talk Podcast. I've been on there since before the season started in the preseason, in training camp, honestly. So follow me. I think we got like 500 followers over there. Um, I was putting stuff only on there until a couple of you asked me to do both. Just drop the shorts on uh, on YouTube as well because some of y'all don't have TikTok. It is what it is. I just want to say, kudos to Howie Roseman. And if he's still working on something, shh, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. We know how he does it. He's the best GM in football, especially at that part. Now, to get to the Pittsburgh Steelers, which we're going to be talking a lot more. You know, we do the pregame. We do the live stream. And we're going to be talking about it Friday. So we're going to talk Friday, Saturday, Sunday about the Steelers. But I don't want you to think I'm forgetting about them. It's been so much of trade rumors and actual trades, we forgot. We do got good news. Lane Jackson, Lane Jackson, Lane Johnson is back. He cleared protocol concussion today. He cleared concussion protocol today. I'm all off now. Lane Johnson is back. He cleared concussion protocol, so he's good to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know this offense is totally different when paved the lane is blocking for Jalen Hurts or blocking for Miles Sanders on a run. Maybe a little Trey Sermon this game. I don't know. 
but it's way different. I'm glad he's back, and I'm glad he's good. Now, we're not going to break down all the do's and don'ts and whatnot for the Steelers. That's Friday, Saturday. And remember, before the game, an hour, Batter Birds podcast will be live. Make sure you got notifications hit so you know when I go live. We're going to start doing it more. Plus, we beat at the play-by-plays. But just to give you a little something-something, the Steelers have not beat the Eagles in Philadelphia since 1965. Sheesh! Their last, there has been nine games played since then in Philly. This week's makes game number 10. So we play nine games since 1965 against the Steelers in Philly. In 2020, they did beat us. Nathan Gary gave up the, uh, uh, the chase touchdown. Remember, Gary was looking foolish under Jim Schwartz. However, that was in Pittsburgh. Nine straight victories in Philly. This one will be the 10th if we get it done. It's been since 1965 since they beat us in Philly. The battle, the battle of PA is legit. The tickets are sold out. It's the, it's the hardest ticket to come by thus far. Even harder than the Eagles-Cowboys Sunday night matchup. That's because a lot of people put respect on the battle of Pennsylvania. We going to break down certain matchups between tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Make sure y'all hit that like button for your boy. It's free, it's easy, and it don't cost a thing. It's greatly appreciated. Robert Quinn, an OG, a leader, just a man you want on your team, especially if he's just going to be in the rotation. Let me know your thoughts about the trade rumors, Kamara, uh, Hunt, maybe a safety. Let me know your final thoughts on Robert Quinn. And let's get this Steelers conversation started. It's been since 1965. The Eagles got to come out hungry off the bye and put in that work. And I want to see good old Robert Quinn get a sack, at least one sack, at least in his first Eagle game. That means with the Eagles, we'll have one sack in one game compared to one sack in seven games with the Bears. That's just going to show the NFC East. Uh Uh-oh, he is for real. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Like I said, we did not forget about the Steelers. We going to dedicate Friday, Saturday, Sunday to them because we's trying to stay undefeated. Thoughts in the comment section. I go by Philly Mike. We out.